So from collision theory, we got the idea that rate is directly related to the concentration of reactants, and it's also related to this piece right here, which we said was related to K, or what we used to determine K. And we're going to take a closer look at this uh, using what's called the Arrhenius equation. So when we look at this, K is really determined by energy of activation and temperature. So R is a constant and CP is a constant that we uh, discussed in the collision theory. Really those pieces are not what we're interested in and that's really what the Arrhenius equation is going to do. It's going to really focus on the variables involved and what determines K. So because C and P are constant uh, in the Arrhenius equation, we just call it A which is uh, called the frequency factor, and it's also you sometimes call it, uh, here called the pre-exponential factor. And it's kind of interesting, it's really saying if the energy of activation was zero, this was what fraction of the molecules would react. So if all of the molecules colliding had enough energy to get over the energy of activation, would they still react? So remember, we still have to have the proper orientation and things like that. Also, the frequency factor has the same units as our rate constant k. So that's just kind of an interesting fact. In reality, we don't we really don't look for k, so k is going to kind of disappear and it's going to show back up when we actually um, find uh, energy of activation using uh, the Arrhenius equation in a graph. But really, we are not interested in um, the frequency factor. So, so the rest of the piece is called the exponential factor. So that's because, you know, this part is raised um, e to the power of it. And this is going to be the main determining factor of our k, and it's related to the activation barrier, energy of activation, and the energy of reactants. So that's that comes from our temperature. And really what the Arrhenius equation is going to show is that k changes with changes in the energy of activation and changes in temperature. So I think we've all heard of the idea that reactions speed up when you heat them up. And that idea is shown in the Arrhenius equation by an effect on K. So when we look at this, as our temperature increases, we are going to expect a corresponding increase in K. So that is what's causing the reaction to speed up is we are increasing K, and that's what the Arrhenius equation is going to use. So if we're interested in looking at a uh, change in K versus change in temperature, we are going to use the integrated form of the Arrhenius equation, which looks like this. So there is a linear form. We'll talk about that in the next video where we're going to uh, find energy of activation from a, a graph of the Arrhenius equation. So here, when I look at this question, I, I've done this many times on exams. The main thing that people uh, get wrong with this is they get confused by, you know, this is T1 and this is the corresponding K for this. And there's going to be a neat little trick later on that we can use to make sure that we've done things correctly here. But uh, that's very common to um, mess that up. So K2 is the rate law constant at T2, so that we're going to expect that to go up. Our temperatures are in K, of course. Our energy of activation is joules per mole. So this is uh, one of the sticky points here. Remember, typically we talk about energy of activations in kilojoules per mole. So it's very common to give you kilojoules. You want to make sure that you convert it to joules. And remember, our R is a constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So this is why we need to convert our energy of activation to joules. This is why we need to convert our temperature into Kelvin. So now if we look at a reaction that involves this, and just like other reactions I've talked about, when you break it down, really it's just a certain number of variables inside of there. You just gotta make sure you put things in the right units and put them in the right place and um, everything's gonna turn out fine. And I guess that's another place where people tend to make mistakes in this equation is in the algebra inside of here. So we have inverses and then we have natural logs. There's a lot of places to go wrong if you don't understand the algebra, what's going on. So make sure you, you understand how to do this. So here, I know we're using this equation because the, the word energy of activation is in there. So either I gotta give you the energy of activation or have you calculate the energy of activation. And this is the only equation that I know of that involves energy of activation. And this is kind of the classic version. I give you the energy of activation, I give you an initial K at an initial temperature, and then I say what's gonna be the new K value at 700. So this number, 2.15 times 10 to the minus 8, I expect my answer to be a higher number than that, or a larger number.
So here, two pieces. I understand we're looking for K2. So we're saying what's going to be the new K value at some higher temperature. So we're looking at K2. K we're looking for K2. I plug in K1. I plug in my energy of activation. Um, remember, I've got to convert kilojoules to joules. That just means I multiply by 10 to the third. R is a constant, 8.314 joules per mole. And then I got to remember if I am given temperatures in degree C, I then convert them to Kelvin. So I put these inverses inside of there. So if you're trying to get to a variable that's inside of a natural log, what you want to do is on the right hand side of equation, go ahead and do the math and crunch this down into one number. And when I'm done, you get with this calculation, you get 2.4 on the right hand side and all the units cancel out, which makes sense. So we want the units of our answer K2 to be equal to the units of our answer in K1 so we want no units on the right hand side. So how you get rid of the natural log, log is you take the inverse log which is e to the x function on your calculator. When I run that through, remember a function just means I turn one number into another number, I take the inverse log of both sides that turns 2.4 into 11.08 uh, and then when you take the inverse log of a natural log it gets rid of the natural log. So K2 divided what was my K1 is equal to 11.08 and all I have to do is multiply both sides by my K1 and then I get what K2 is. And remember the units, whatever the units were on K1, that's going to be my units on K2. And then I take a second and say did my K value increase? So we went from uh, 2.15 times 10 to the minus 8th to 2.38 times 10 to the minus 7th. Minus 7th is uh, represents a larger number than minus 8, so that makes sense. As we increase the temperature, the K value is going to increase.